Welcome back to another video and we are jumping right in to our Christmas card series. This is one of my favorite series on the channel and today I've got these three different cards for you that I'm going to show you how I made super easy, super fun, and let's just get right into it. Okay, so we're going to start with the watercolor card first. Now I'm using my Cold Pressed Academy watercolor paper for this one and I've also got the Hot Pressed watercolor paper pad here and I'm going to use this one for the brush show. And what I'm going to do for this one, so I've got my little custom palette here and I do have a video putting this palette together and all of the colors that I've used. So I'll go ahead and link that down below. But because this is a Christmas card, I'm thinking of doing the Permanent Alizarin Crimson from M. Graham and the Deep Sap Green from Daniel Smith. I love these two colors. However, we have to keep in mind that they are complementary colors, so I know that they are going to mix and they could become a little bit muddy, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful when laying them down, but I think just red and green go perfect for um, Christmas. I'm going to go ahead and wet my paper. Now I'm using my silver black velvet brushes for this, but you can use whatever brushes you have. And this is just a flat brush and then I'll be using my number eight round. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my permanent alizarin crimson from M. Graham. And it is a really nice like Christmassy red here. And I want to make sure that it's not too runny but it's not too, too dry. And I'm just gonna pick a few places to, to drop this in. And as you can see, the M gram spreads quite a bit. So I maybe wanna make it a little bit more concentrated than that. Now this is one of the colors that I find spreads quite a bit. All of the M. Graham paints kind of tend to do that. So I'm just adding a little bit more water to it now just to loosen it up and get some of those edges moving around and kind of get rid of some of those cauliflower effects. And then I'm just gonna drop a little bit more of the red in here where I want it. So I'm kind of picking a few places. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my Daniel Smith green. And again, I want it about the same, so not, not too dark. And I'm just gonna start getting this in. And I'm starting more concentrated. Like where I really want it. Cause maybe this is gonna go more towards the edges, and then I'll get a little bit looser with the water, I guess. So once I want things to start spreading, and then maybe I want it to be very light towards some of these edges, so I'm just going to and I'm gonna grab some more of my alizarin crimson. Now I'm getting it quite watered down. Maybe we've got some kind of up here. So I'm going fairly quickly because this paper does kind of dry fairly quickly. Want just a little bit more of the alizarin crimson. grab some more Daniel Smith I'm gonna grab it quite concentrated and just see if I can get some splatters There we go. I kind of like that. 
So I'm doing it with the alizarin crimson now. I'm going in just a little bit wetter. So this is gonna cause a little bit of blooming, so be aware. I'm just gonna just add a little bit. So I'm really just making a mess, basically, <laughs> is what I'm doing, um, but I'm gonna let it all kind of bleed together and just see where we end up with. And I think at this point, if I add too much more to it, it's going to um, like really make a mess. So I'm just gonna go around some of the edges and just really soften up some of the edges. So I'm just taking a tissue paper and I'm just dabbing because I want it to be lighter around the edges and uh, get more concentrated in the middle. So I'm just dabbing and you can see it's like making a complete mess, but if there's anywhere that I just need to pick up a little bit more color. And you can really do this with any colors at all. So pick your two favorite colors, mix them together. Um, I might even get just a tiny bit of texture in here. Okay, so I think I'm at the point where I'm fiddling. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. So these are the brush -o that I have. It's the Color Craft Brush -o Colors, and I have sea green and turquoise here. These are two of my favorite colors. Now I do have a full video and review on these and demonstrating them in a few paintings, but I'm going to go ahead and use them on the Hot Pressed Watercolor Academy. Now I just use the, the pins here to kind of make a little um, spot on the top because it's a lot easier to get it out. And what I'm gonna do is sort of the same effect. So I'm just gonna sprinkle these onto the paper, sort of just in a couple different areas, kind of in the same fashion as the watercolor and just spreading them out. And I just tap the container to kind of get it out. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do it with the blue. Now these are pretty concentrated, so you want to be careful with how many you're putting down if you're not really sure, because um, it might not look like a lot on the paper, but once we start spritzing it with water, it really activates and gets vibrant very quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this Jane Davenport um, mister here. I like this one because it puts out sort of a, a fine mist so I can build up the water if I want to. And I'm just going to go ahead and start spraying everything. And I like to kind of use the mister as I'm spraying to kind of move it as I'm going And I'm really wetting the paper here. Okay. And then I'm just going to start ever so slightly just moving the paper around. Now be careful because I've been playing with these brushes for a while. Um, but some of these areas that don't um, dissolve right away, you can just kind of go in and tap them in. Now it will stain your finger a little bit, but it does wash off. Um, you might have like a slight residue of it on your finger. Now I don't want the colors to mix too, too much. And I kind of want the edges to be a little bit lighter, like with the watercolor one. So I'm just gonna come around and just start tapping some of these areas where it's mixing a little too much for me and I want to keep it a little separate and any colors that I want to adhere more to the paper like some of these blue areas I'm going to give them a few minutes to kind of set in and then I'm just going to start dabbing off and I might even get another um, Kleenex here because I definitely want the edges 
lighter. So I'm just going to go around all of the edges. But one really cool thing about these um, brush out paints is they sort of like stain the paper. So when I'm doing things like this, I'll, I like to choose more staining paints or more staining things like the brush out. And I'm just going to dab any areas off. So if I notice that it's not the way that I like it. And I kind of like having a couple little Apache places here and there. I might add just a smidgen more of the green up here. I'm going to be careful because I don't want it to get too far into the blue. I just want it to be a little bit more green right up there. And I'm going to kind of give it a second to sit in in any of these little areas. And these paints are super fun to play with. Like they're so fun to just splash around on paper and uh, you can get so many cool effects with them. They are a little bit frustrating if you're trying to get them to stay in place because they definitely don't want to do that. But if you're trying to get some really cool watercolor effects, um, I love adding them onto a painting that I've done. If I just want like a little splash of paint coming off on an area and I can't figure out quite how to do it, I just sprinkle some of this and then, you know, spray it and dab it up and I get that effect. It's really cool. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just leave this like this. Now these do stay a little bit more vibrant than traditional watercolors. They will dry a little bit less vibrant, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and then we'll come back with the next step after. Okay, so this is what our cards look like once they're dry. Now, I am not a great hand letter at all. So what I like to do when I want to do like a message like this on top of my cards is I'll actually practice writing it out on some tracing paper or just some other paper. And then I'll use my graphite paper to transfer it to my cards once I'm happy with my hand lettering. And this definitely takes me a couple of times to get it right. So now that I've got it down, you know, I can just easily transfer it onto my cards and I just put the graphite paper underneath and I just do it loose enough so that I can just see it. Now I'm going to start with this one down here. And what I'm going to do with this one is I love like red and green and gold. So I think that's what I'm going to use. And I've got um, some options here. So I've got the Winter and Newton ink and gold. I like this one for smaller areas. I find it's a little too watery um, for larger areas and you have to go over it quite a bit of times. Um, but I do really like this Liquitex Iridescent Bright Gold. Now this is an acrylic gouache. I am falling in love with these Liquitex acrylic gouaches. I have picked up quite a few and they're definitely becoming a huge favorite of mine. And I love this color. It's sort of like a bronzy gold. So it's really perfect for Christmas. And there's also this uh, Sennelier 3D liner that you could use to write this on. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the acrylic gouache today for this. And what I'm going to do is just take a, a liner brush here. So this is nothing special. It's the Winsor & Newton Cotman Rigger Brush, and it's a number one here. And I like brushes that have a longer point um, like this when I'm doing lettering, just so I can control how thick or thin my lines get. And I'm just going to dip this in. And I always like to kind of run a little bit off the side here. And I'm just going to start lettering it and I'll probably start a little bit of this in real time and then I'll sped it, uh, speed it up a little bit just because this is going to take quite a while. But this gouache is super opaque so it should cover up all of our graphite lines no problem. And I'm just going to keep dipping in and I like to go fairly slow. And I'm just resting my hand on the water pad here. And 
And when I need it to be a little bit thicker, I just push down a little bit harder and just make a little bit thicker of a line. And you can also go over it a few times. So I like how the lettering turned out. I just grabbed a little palette here. This is a palette that I use for my gouache. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this gold paint on here. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of water that I have on the side of the camera here and just get it wet enough so that I could do a few little like gold splashes maybe a little bit more wet. Just dipping in and dipping into the water and I just wanna get a few Just little splashes here and there. Okay, I like that. So that's how this card came out. And you can see how this is a really nice, like metallic-y gold finish. I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one with the Winsor & Newton Silver Ink. Now these you wanna shake up really, really well. And I've just got um, a different brush here. This is the Simply Simmons number two. Um, just so I don't kind of contaminate the two brushes and I'll go and wash the other one out really well. Now this silver ink is super pigmented and I really like this one as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the same technique with this one. Now this is a much runnier ink. So again, it's gonna lay down a little bit easier, probably a little bit quicker, hopefully. And again, if I need areas to be a little thicker, I just go back over them. And it's just the amount of pressure that I'm putting down on the brush. That's how I'm getting thinner or thicker lines. I find a brush that's this length or longer, I do well with. The little brush tip markers that have a thicker brush nib to it, I find I don't do as well with those because I find it's just less easy to control. drops. It 
and then I just do quicker ones for the the littler ones. And I also want to show you one card that I did with the um, Bleed Proof White. So this is the PH Martin uh, Bleed Proof White. So you can also use that one and do just a white background. But I like how these ones come out because they have a little bit of dimension to them. But they're really quick and easy and simple to do. You just do whatever kind of background you want or whatever kind of message that you want on top. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bells so you're notified when I post the next one in this holiday card series.